iProcess is an Android app that runs on phones and tablets and makes it easy to process transactions, access your saved customers, and view your transaction history. It is a free app and you can search iProcess in the Play Store and it will be the first result. Once the app's installed, you can just open it and you'll be taken to the login page. So first things first, you have to enter your username and password for your Gateway account. Once you have that, just log in and then you'll be taken through the setup process. So it's going to ask you for a nickname. This will show in your gateway in your license manager so you can see what devices are using iProcess. Then it'll take you through pairing any devices. So any card readers that you're going to be using with the app, it'll take you through the setup process here. Uh, skip forward in the video to see exactly how that works. But essentially, it'll take you through connecting a Bluetooth reader. You can skip over that if you don't have one. And if you have a plug-in reader that'll plug into the headphone jack on your phone, you can set that up here as well. We're gonna skip through those and then go straight to the tax rate. You can set this to zero and that's fine, or you can set it to something else. I'm gonna leave it at zero for now. All right, and now I'm in the app and I can start processing payments. So I'll just do a quick one right now as an example. I'm gonna do a $1 sale and I'm gonna key in a test card number and an expiration and that's it. So I have a $1 sale on this card, everything else is optional. All I must enter is the credit card and expiration date. So I'm just gonna go quick, hit charge. Customer can sign. They can also add a tip if they'd like. So I'm gonna add a 20% tip. So now I'm up to $1.20. When I hit approve, it's gonna actually charge the customer. And there we go. The transaction was approved and it asked me if I'd like to view the receipt. If I say no thanks, I'll be taken right back to the sale page. And if I say yes, then I see the receipt with all the relevant information on there. I can pretty easily share it. So up here in the top right, we have a share button. And when you tap that, that brings up the share sheet. So any app that can accept an image will show up here. And there's a few more apps down here that'll show up. For this example, I'm gonna use mail. So that brings up my mail app and here's an image of the receipt. And then I can just put whatever email address in there that I want and subject line. I'm gonna cancel right now and delete the draft. Okay, perfect. So I'm done with that transaction. So I'm gonna go back. And then I'm back on the sale page so I can start a new one. And for sake of example, let's do another transaction. We're gonna do 250. I'm gonna enter a different card number. And then I'm gonna enter more info for this customer. I'm gonna include a first name, last name, an order ID of 9999999, an order description of something cool. And then this beans field here is a merchant defined field that I set up in my gateway account. So you can have up to 20 custom fields. And this one is one that I have created just called beans. Uh, this is for a coffee shop. So I'm gonna say ground right there and charge the customer. So again, I can sign, approve, and there we go. The payment was approved. I can view the receipt. And because I entered more information about the customer, a little bit more info shows up here. And again, I can share it if I'd like, uh, or I can just go back and start a new transaction. Now, let's say that I made a mistake and I actually didn't want to charge this customer. I charged them before they were ready or something's changed, whatever. Up here in the top right, next to the share button, we also have three dots, which lets you take a couple actions on this transaction. So when I tap that, I'm shown the refund and void links. So if I refund it, these, this original sale will process and a second transaction will process with a refund for whatever amount I'd like. In this case, I made a mistake. I don't wanna charge them at all. I don't want them to see anything on their bank statement if possible, so I'm gonna void. The transaction is voided and then we're all good. And now let's move on to the next section. So I just ran a couple transactions and I wanna see a history of that. So what can I do? So you wanna hit these three bars in the top left or you can just swipe in from the left side of the screen to bring up the main menu. The next option on the list is history. So let's go in there. In here, you can see all transactions run on your account that were run through iProcess. So my whole history is here and I can see the last couple transactions that I just ran. So there's that $1.20 sale, the 250 sale, and then the 200, 250 void. And I can tap into one and get the receipts. 
All of that's here and available to me, uh, including signatures and all that good stuff. If I go back into this $1.20 sale, I can still see the action, so I can still share this after the fact to another app or another person. I can hit the three dots to run a refund or a void. In this case, let's run a refund. So it defaults to the full amount, but maybe I don't want to do the full amount. Maybe I want to do a partial refund. So to do that, I'm going to tap into the field and I'm going to change this to $1. So I only want to refund a dollar of the $1.20 that they paid. Hit refund. And there we go. They've been refunded $1. When I'm back in my history, I can see the $1 refund as a new transaction. If I ever want to download all of my transaction history, I can do that with the three dots here in the top right. So I can tap these icons in the top right to share my history. And when I share this, I'm able to export a CSV with all of the transactions currently in my history. And again, just like the receipts, I can share to any app on my device that will accept a CSV text file. Now let's run to the settings real quick. So there's a couple settings in the app to let you configure the app to behave how you want. So first off, there's two optional settings at the top based on services that may or may not be active on your gateway account. So credits is the ability to give money to one of your customers without a, a previous transaction. So without like it's different from a refund, you're just gonna give them a certain amount of money. You can enable that and that'll work if it's active on your account. And the customer vault is a PCI compliant way to store customers that you wanna be able to charge at a later date. If you have this active on your account, you can also enable that here in the app so that you can access all of those customers. Now that I've enabled both of those, if I bring up the main menu, I can see start credit and I'm taken to the credit page, which is exactly like a sale. I'll just enter an amount and then it asks you for the exact same information as for a sale. If I go back to the customer vault, then I can see any customers I've previously saved to this account. I currently have two customers, Jane Doe and John Smith, and they have different credit cards on file. So the basic functionality of this is that I can charge these customers again. So if I tap into Jane Doe, I can say start sale or start credit. So if I do start sale, it brings me back to the sale page. And now the American Express that was on file for that customer is pre-filled. When I enter an amount and continue, then their information is already filled out. Their card number, their name information, anything I had saved for this customer will be here. If I go back to the main customers page, I can see them and if I click the I, that'll take me to that information for the customer and I can see what information is saved for them. You can use the search box at the top of the page to search for customers. This will be mostly useful if you have lots of customers saved to the vault. And you can use the add button to add any customers straight from the app. Additionally, once you turn on the customer vault feature, if I go into a normal sale, a new sale, I can add a credit card. And now I have a radio button here to store the customer to the vault. And so I can check that. And when I charge them, The transaction was approved, and then if I go back to my list of customers, I see this new customer. I didn't give them a name, so they're listed as unknown, but all their information is saved. And there's a few other settings of note uh, that can help you optimize your checkout experience. Uh, you can set the default sale page. So we haven't gone over the readers yet. That's a little later in the video, but you can choose between defaulting to the on-device processing or the wireless card reader processing. And the flow is slightly different for each one. So whichever one you're gonna be using the most often, you can set as the default. On-device processing is keen in transactions like we've been doing so far, or using a reader that connects directly to the phone, typically via the headphone jack. If you're using one of those, on-device processing is the best for you. If you're using a Bluetooth connected card reader, then wireless card reader is gonna be best. I'm gonna leave it as on device for now and just go back. You can set an app password so that every time you open the app, you're required to enter this five digit pin. And if you can't enter it, you can't access the app at all. Uh, I'm not gonna turn it on now, but you can just enter a password, confirm it, and then turn it on so that you can be extra secure in knowing that only you can access the app. Enable signature is next. You can turn that on or off. By default, it's on, and this is where you ask for the customer to sign the device uh, when you're running a transaction. If you wanna remove that from the flow, if you wanna make the checkout even quicker, you can just turn that off. 
you can set the default tax rate. So it was 0%, 0% because that's what we set initially. If I want to set it to my local one, I can do that, save, and now that'll be automatically applied to any amount that I enter for a new transaction. So if I ran a new transaction now for $10, the subtotal would be $10, and then 85 cents of tax would be added on top. Enabling tip is for the signature page where the uh, tip for the customer is available. If you turn this off, they won't be prompted to add a tip. And location map is a cool feature that lets you add a map to all of your receipts so that when a customer uh, checks out with you and you send them the receipt from the app, there's a map on there so they can see where they checked out. We do need your location to do this. It's the only thing that we use your location for. It's not used for anything else in the app. So you can allow or disallow that based on if you want that feature or not. You can change the device nickname at any point. Again, this is what shows up in the license manager for the app, and you can change that to whatever is most descriptive for you. And finally, email receipts lets you customize uh, whether an email receipt is automatically sent to the customer if you enter an email in their transaction data. So if you enter an email uh, as part of the customer's info when you're checking them out, then we will send a text receipt to them. It's not the same receipt that comes from the app, the full like image formatted one. It's a simple receipt, but it'll automatically go out. If you don't want that, uncheck this. If you are using a Bluetooth card reader like the Mayura M10, then you'll need to pair the reader with your phone before iProcess is able to use it. iProcess will walk you through these steps when you first set up the app, but you can pair a reader at any time and it'll work just as well. First, you want to put the reader in pairing mode. On the Mayura device I have here, I just need to hold down the Bluetooth button until the icon on screen starts flashing. Next, I can open the settings app on my phone and go to Bluetooth settings. I should see the device as an available pairing device and I can tap it to start the pairing process. All I have to do is confirm on each device that the number shown is the same and I'm all good. Now if I go to iProcess and try a wireless sale, I can process a transaction with the wireless reader. Yeah.